What we're going to be going over here is diluted earnings per share here for convertible bonds, which really represent convertible securities here. And we're going to be using the if converted method here to measure the dilutive effect that the convertible bonds have. Now, let's just go through our terminology here. So the if converted method for convertible bonds or convertible securities assumes two points here. One, that the conversion of the securities are at the beginning of the period here or the beginning of the year that we're going to be looking at here with one exception here. So if they're issued here, the convertible security is issued during the period here, then uh, the, at, it would uh, the conversion would be based at the time of the issuance of the securities here during the period or during the year as we're going to be looking at and point two here we're going to be looking at the elimination here the related interest expense uh, due to this conversion here net of the tax okay so let's go down and uh, do our definition here so this is what we're going to be looking at we're going to be uh, trying to determine the diluted earnings per share here and we'll just define this as the current year the diluted earnings per share so what that would be here is we're going to take our normally all we have here for earnings per share is we take our net income and divide it by the number of shares outstanding common stock shares outstanding or it could be the weighted number of shares outstanding but when we come into the, using this uh, diluted when we have convertible securities here we're going to have to deal with some the interest expense on these securities and we're also going to have to be looking at the number of uh, shares that these securities or these bonds are converted into into common stock so that's what we have to deal with here so let's go and do our definitions here so first uh, again the bonds represent convertible securities here and they're exchanged here for common stock in this example so we have two two situations here a and B here so let's say if the bond is issued in a prior year here we're trying to figure out the diluted effect here for the current year but we have a bond that's convertible and it's issued in a prior year here so what we would do we assume the conversion to common stock as of the beginning of the year here uh, when we're uh, trying to determine our diluted uh, uh, earnings here per share and and when we do assume that it's uh, the the bond here is converted to common stock in the beginning a year here then you also have to assume and the fact would be that you wouldn't be paying any interest here on those convertible bonds during the year here uh, assuming they're converted here in the beginning of the year here so what we would have to do in this case the bond interest would have to be added back net of taxes and we're going to go through an example showing that so uh, what we're talking about here is that the net income at this point would have included that bond interest expense here but since uh, and since uh, the bonds were converted here at the beginning of the year here the net income uh, would have to be increased by the interest expense the interest expense would have to be added back here because there wouldn't be any interest expense based on that conversion okay and then the other point is here now take the example here if the bond was issued during the year here then you assume the conversion to common stock at the date when it's issued here now this is the case here where you're gonna pay interest on the convertible bonds after the issue date here but again what we would have to do on this conversion of those bonds here and uh, we'll go through an example here the bond interest again would have to be added back net of taxes so that's how we're gonna have to deal with that interest expense here and then we also have to determine a number of uh, shares that are converted based on uh, that the convertible bonds into common stock okay so two points here let's look at this net income here and these converted shares some notes on that so this is the case here point one here and net income would include the interest expense on the bonds for the year here uh, when we're when we're making before we're making this conversion here and that would be a reduction to our income now assuming the bonds are converted to here to common stock then of course there would be no interest expense here assuming they're converted here at the beginning of the year but as we explained here and number two here our converted shares here when you again here when you're converting the bonds to common stock you're going to be increasing the number of shares outstanding so upon that conversion here you're going to be increasing the number of shares outstanding so what we'd have to do here for these convertible securities we have to add back the interest expense that would have gone into our net income based on the conversion of those securities and then we also have to increase the number of shares outstanding here based on our conversion okay so let's go and look at uh, the problem that we're going to have here okay here's a situation where corporation a has two 
convertible bonds issued and outstanding. So point of uh, the first bond here it's issued they issued 50 bonds here on 71x1 here at a par value of $1,000 no discount or premium and it's a 6% interest on the bonds and each bond here is converted into 80 shares here common stock so if all the bonds are converted all 50 bonds are converted into common stock there would be 4,000 additional shares here common stock now for our second bond here this is going to be we're going to be issuing a company issued 75 bonds but they didn't issue it here in that year x1 it was issued here in 91 x2 year x2 here at a par value of one thousand dollars they're going to be eight percent uh, bond or interest on the bonds and each bond here is convertible into 100 shares here at common stock so if all the bonds are converted you would have an additional five seven thousand five hundred shares here of common stock okay so let's go look at our example here and again we're going to be calculating the earnings per share here on this dilutive securities the bonds here so this could really be any security here but we're using our bonds as our examples here so uh, we'll call this one bond a that was that conversion uh, Bec that was bond A here that was issued here on 71X1. And based on our definition before here, we're using this if converted method. This is where the conversion would be at the beginning of year X2. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to determine the dilutive earnings per share here for year X2. Bond is issued here on 71X1 prior year here. So the conversion of these bonds into common stock is going to be based at the beginning of the year X2 here. Now for our second bond B here. Uh, that was the one that was issued here in 91X2. During the year here that we're going to be trying to determine the earnings per sh a diluted earnings per share here year X2. Now this and again it was uh, um, issued here uh, and uh, nine uh, at the eight and uh, then in September 1st here so this is where the conversion is going to be based on the issue date here when it's issued here in 91x2 so first bond was issued here in the prior year x1 here and this second bond was issued here during the current year that we're going to be looking at here on 91x2 okay so now this is the problem and what we're going to do here is we're going to have to de determine the diluted earnings here per share here for year 20x2 based on our bond conversion. You see? Okay, okay. So I'm just setting it up here. A basic example here. We're going to have some revenues here, and this is for 20x2. Say that forty thousand dollars are thirty thousand in revenues here, and we're going to have some expenses here. And I've got these expenses broken out here. We're going to have the other than bond interest expense here. Let's just say sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Now we're going to have two bonds here. We're going to have a bond here, that first bond here, we're going to have some interest expense here of, uh, let's say that was uh, 50 bonds here, $1,000 par times a 6% interest rate. And those were the ones here that were issued here in the prior year. So total bond interest expense would be for one year here for year 20x2 here. And that would be three thousand dollars now we have this second bond here those are the 75 uh, bonds here thousand dollar par again and they had an eight percent interest rate on them but they were issued here on uh, 91 x2 here so there's only going to be four months of interest due on these bonds from uh, uh, September 1st or 91 through 1231 that's only four months here so four twelfths of a year uh, times our number of bonds here interest rate and the par value is going to give us an interest expense here of two thousand dollars on those bonds okay so we have our expense here on our bonds and that's the interest here before taxes here so total interest for our bond other expenses plus our bonds here is going to be twenty one thousand eight hundred dollars taking that here for uh, subtracting that from our revenues here we're going to come up with the income before income taxes. So this is the way you're working with these diluted securities. You have to come up with your income before taxes here. So there it is, $18,200. Now we're going to assume we got a tax rate here of 40%. So 40% of that would be $7,280 subtracting that out here. And we're going to come up with a net income here after tax of $10,920. So this is what we have to come up with here when we're working with these diluted securities. Remember, we have to determine what our net income is here. And um, again, remember this net income here, that includes the 
interest expense on those bonds, but after taxes. So that's going to be a key point here. That interest expense that's included in our net income here is after taxes. So that's where we're going to come and we're going to have to add that back here when we uh, look at the dilution of these bonds into common stock. Okay, so let's take it so that we have we know our interest expense here on the bonds we have two different bonds here and we have that interest expense and then we know our net income here after taxes that we calculated now the other thing we have to know here and we're going to have a weighted average here the common stock outstanding let's just say before any conversion here we have 2,000 shares here outstanding so now we know our number of shares outstanding here and now we can go in we can go cal uh, calculate our diluted uh, 20 uh, 20x2 earnings per share here. Okay, so we go back to our equation here. Let's look at that here. So we start out with our net income here after taxes. That's after it, it included the interest expense here on those bonds, but the after tax interest expense. So that was $10,920. So now we have to. Uh, we're going to base uh, say these we're going to look at the bonds here that are converted here that when we talked about it initially let's just say we're going to uh, the bonds are going to be converted here uh, based uh, to determine our diluted earnings per share so what we have uh, based on the fact that these bonds are converted we have to add back the interest that we had included here in our net income so in this case that was that five thousand dollars worth of interest here three thousand for that the first bond here and 2000 here for the second bond. So total of $5,000 worth of interest, but that has to be net of any tax. So uh, because we already we taken the tax out here for our net income, so we have to be adding back that interest here uh, based on the uh, net of the tax. So our tax rate was 40%, so 1 minus 40, well, that's going to give us 60% here times $5,000 here, interest expense. Again, added back here based on our fact that we're converting these bonds over here and we wouldn't be paying that amount of interest here, net of tax based on our bond conversion that we initially talked about. Now, next we come to our denominator here, that denominator here uh, for what we have sitting out here in uh, stock here based on this these bond conversions. So remember here we started out with 2,000 shares here uh, for the year here. That's the weighted average of common stock that's outstanding. Now we got to determine the amount here that we're converting over here. So again for that first bond here that uh, 50 bonds here times 80 shares per bond here. Those were the ones that were issued here in the prior year 71X1. So they're all going to be converted over here as of the beginning of the year here. So 100% of those bonds, 50 times 80, or $4,000, uh, 4, uh, uh, 50 bonds converted into 80 shares of common stock is going to give us 4,000 shares of common stock. So this is, we're going to increase our common stock here by 4,000 shares here for this first bond issue here that was issue, issued in 7.1x1 and had to be converted over as of the beginning of the year. Now we have our second bond here. That, uh, this is where we're going to just use the bonds weighted average here. So this is a key point here. Those are the 75 bonds that were issued here on 91X2. So 75 bonds and they had 100 shares per bond. Now we'd multiply that times again. In this case, the weighted average gives us 4 twelfths of a year here. It was, they were sitting out here from 91X2 here uh, for the current year again here uh, to the 1231, the end of the uh, x2 year so for four months here four twelfths of that times the 75 bonds times 100 shares common shares per bond is going to give us 2500 extra common shares here so this is what we had 2000 sitting here we have 4000 shares converted over for the bonds that were issued in the prior year here at the 50 bonds 80 shares per bond and then we have 2500 common shares here for the bonds that were issued here on 91x2 based on that weighted average here so um, again let's just go through these bonds here since I've got it laid out here so these uh, these bonds here that issued on 71x2 you assume there would be issued here at the beginning of the year x2 uh, so they were issued here in 71x1 uh, the prior year here so you assume there would be issued here at the beginning of the year x2 when we're calculating our diluted earnings per share here and then for the other bonds here 
the ones that were issued on 91X2, you assume they to be issued here at the date of the issue of the bonds here, 91X2, or the conversion here at the date of issue. Okay, so those are the only points. So here we take our we take our net income for the uh, net income here, a le uh, net of any tax, the net income and it is net of any tax, and it also in what included that interest expense here, reduction by the interest expense. So we had to add back our interest based on our conversion here, those the interest expense for the year here based on the conversion, and you've seen that that was the the three th let's just go look at it the three thousand here for that first bond two thousand for the second bond and then in the second bond was only sitting out here for four months and then you would add back that interest here based on our conversion net of the tax amount here one minus the forty percent tax rate so there it is that gives us adding back our interest uh, because that interest was initially included here in our net income and upon the conversion we had to add that back here and then so we've increased our numerator here in our equation here um, by adding back the interest but we also increased our denominator here in, in our equation here based on the conversion of those bonds into common stock that we looked at so just dividing everything out this is going to give us our diluting earnings per share here for 20x2 and it just happens to be a dollar 64 cents per share now if we were just strictly looking at the non-diluted earnings per share we would have taken the 10,920 here and divided by only the 2,000 shares outstanding so that would be the difference but since we are dealing with this diluted effect here for our bonds which really are conver uh, convertible bonds which are we represent convertible securities here we had to add back the interest increase our numerator in our account and then we also had to increase the denominator here by the number of bonds that were conver con converted here based on our definitions. Okay, so that takes care of our example here on our diluted earnings here per share for convertible bonds, which really represent convertible securities.